So when I was working on the meditation and uh, preparing for uh, what I wanted to share with you today, um, I had this little, little egoic voice in my head say, you talk about forgiveness too much around here. And I thought, well, maybe I talk about it a lot, but that's because I need to hear it. Because I haven't got this thing worked out completely in my life. I mean, I'm, I think I'm pretty well along the way. I don't find myself judging people as much as I did when I was younger. But I still have my little Achilles heel around, around this whole idea. Uh, in that, and I'll, I'll tell you the story. And it happens over and over and with different uh, circumstances, but it's the same thing. My thing is that something isn't where it belongs. In this particular case, this week, I went into the pantry in the kitchen, which is locked. And I, uh, we have all these uh, containers, these uh, buckets. And you can't, it's hard to pull the lid off with your hands. We had this gold-colored uh, little device, little tool, that kind of grabs the lips around the top of the bucket and pries it off very nicely. But the little prying device wasn't where it's supposed to be. And I looked on all the shelves to see if it had been put away somewhere else. Nothing. So then I went over and I went through all the drawers in the kitchen. And then I'm looking in cabinets and telling myself, someone stole that tool. <laughs> now I know better. Again, it was in a locked place. Chances of it being stolen. And who would want it? So, you know, like, what is that in my head? And it's always an anonymous person. Someone stole this. Huh. So I go home, and it's still on my mind, so I say to Margaret and Barbara, I said, someone took that little thing that we opened the, the, the containers with in the, in the pantry. And Barbara says, there are two bucks at Home Depot. Get over it. <laughs> So the forgiveness work I have to do around that is to not only someone anonymous, I mean, if I had just blamed someone directly, I could go, I could go tell them that, I've, that, that, it was, it was, that it's okay, but I, there's nobody to, to actually direct this to uh, except me. I have to forgive myself for falling into judgment once again. My uh, spiritual teacher, Rocking Bear, uh, used to tell a great story about going on a hike with a, uh, one of his apprentices. It was not me, but he, he explained that he was out uh, on this hike and the, the fellow that he was with uh, was, wore a backpack so he could carry some food and water and such. And uh, they were walking along and the guy started complaining to Rocking Bear about these people in his life and how, how miserable they made him and all the problems they created and blah, 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 blah. So Rocking Bear every so often would stop and reach over and pick up a stone off the ground. And he pat the guy on the back on his, on his uh, uh, backpack and throw the stone in there. <laughs> and they'd walk a little longer and the guy would keep it up and he'd get another stone and he'd put it in the backpack. This went on, you know, throughout this whole thing. And finally, you know, the guy's walking like this, carrying his backpack. And he finally he said, I, I got to take a break. He said, sure. So... The guy sat down somewhere you know, on the ground and, and pulled his backpack off and reached in to get the water and saw that it was full of stones. And he said, where did all this come from? He said, and Rocky Bear said, well, every time you were telling me about somebody that was messing up your life, I went ahead and gave you a physical way to deal with that, to feel that. Because when you are blaming people and complaining about people in your life, what you're doing is you're creating your own baggage. All day long. And every, it's not just one person gets one stone every time you think about that person. It's like putting a stone in a backpack. And pretty soon you're lugging through life, trying to get things done, not having the energy, not, not uh, thinking that you can get through your day. Because you put so much burden on yourself. And that's the nature of blaming. It really, we're really not doing anything to anyone else. Edwin used to say that, that uh, uh, blaming somebody and finding fault in somebody is like uh, drinking poison and expecting them to get sick. It, it doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. 
the way it works is, is that we're in charge of our experience. So the thoughts we're having are doing something to us. They're not necessarily doing anything to anyone else. In fact, I guarantee you they're not doing anything to anyone else. Now, if you confront someone that you're upset with, you know, they can take it on. They can create their own burden. But your burden is not their burden. Those are very different things. And frankly, the only way around this dilemma, which comes very naturally to human beings, I see children doing it, you know, going to mommy and blaming the other kid for how they're so miserable. It just comes real natural. But it's not healthy at all. So um, uh, some time ago, excuse me one second, I'm going to grab this book. Uh, when I was at Asilomar, we had a speaker. His name was Fred Luskin, and he wrote this book called Forgive for Good. And I found it a very helpful book. And what he does is he, he says that we, uh, that we have grievances in our lives and that we hang on to our grievances as though they were sacred. And that we, what we do is we're doing that very thing. We're complaining. And the only way to get around that is to let go of it. And the most logical way to let go of it is to forgive. But people don't really understand how that works and really don't understand how this is a progressive problem in people's lives. And until you know what's going on and can see it and understand it, you really can't get very far. I'm leaving one more time because I need glasses. I have no idea if the, if the camera's following me over there or not, but just thought I'd explain. So Luskin has this list of 12 things that he says uh, uh, will help us determine if the stories we're telling are a grievance story. So listen to these real quick. I'll go through them quickly. Have you told your story more than twice to the same person? Do you replay the events that happen more than two times in a day in your mind? Do you find yourself speaking to the person who hurt you even when that person isn't there? Uh, I've got some people getting this. Okay, have you made a commitment to yourself to tell the story without upset and then found yourself doing that very thing? Is the person who hurt you the central character of your story? When you tell this story, does it remind you of other painful things that have happened to you? Does your story focus primarily on the pain and what you have lost? In your story, is there a villain? Have you made a commitment to yourself to not tell your story again and then broken your vow? Do you look for other people with similar problems to tell your story to? Carolyn Mace calls that uh, woundology, that we connect at the point of our wounds. Kind of morbid. Has your story stayed the same over time or has it changed? Chances are it's changed. You've embellished it because you really want people to, to sympathize with you so, you so the story gets bigger and nastier and, and, and something that people could not possibly think was your doing. Have you checked the details of your story for accuracy? There's the last one. So that's the, uh, the idea of, that Luskin gives us for how we have this thing called a grievance story, probably many of them, and that we, we fall into that story. And what it does is it holds us captive. It makes, it, it imprisons us around our own uh, feelings and our own ideas. It holds us from being who we've come here to be on so many levels, in so many ways. When we do that, when we hold on to blame, the only one that's getting hurt is us. You know, and if, I'm not going to tell you that there aren't people that do inappropriate things in our lives. Sure, there are. Of course there are. We, and we're probably doing inappropriate things in other people's lives. You know, I'm talking traffic, uh, uh, standing in a line. It doesn't matter much what we do that we can uh, offend people, but that's really not the issue. It's what's offending us. That's the only place we can get anything done. The rest of it is really up to other people to work out. And our work is to free all this up, to let go of all this baggage, and to not have to carry that everywhere that we go. And I know I'm talking to people who have been working on this for years, but the fact that I know I'm still working on it tells me that maybe we all have some stuff in all of that that we can get. The, any grievance story requires a victim. And who gets to be the victim? The one telling the story. 
It's just kind of how it's designed. You don't, you don't tell a story about how you hurt somebody else's feelings, do you? I've never, I did, that just doesn't happen, not much. Maybe in counseling once in a while, but people don't walk around talking about uh, their uh, missteps in life. We talk about other people's missteps around us and the impact that had. And I'm not suggesting that we should just let go without anything uh, bad behavior. When people uh, behave badly, it's perfectly okay to tell them that wasn't appropriate. It's not a problem until we become the victim, until we, we suddenly think that we have been injured through this. When we do that, now we've lost something. Now suddenly uh, things are, are not working the way we intended for them to work. So the idea here is that forgiveness is, is our way out. Now most people don't understand this. They think that somehow forgiveness does let the other person off, off the hook. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with that. Most people that we, find, that we believe have done egregious things to us don't feel like they're on the hook at all anyway. So it's really not about them. It's about us. And there's some key elements of this that I think will help. And let me go, <laughs> golly, I have so many things over here I want. So let's look at what those, some of those things might be. First of all, we have to look at what is not part of this forgiveness process. Forgiveness is not about condoning poor behavior from others. You can tell them. You can say to somebody, that didn't work. That was not helpful. What you said was stupid. You can go that far. It's really okay. Of course, then they need to work on their forgiveness. So condoning bad behavior is still something that we can do. We don't give that up. For, forgetting the experiences of our lives, no, that's not about forgiveness. The challenge is, and you may have felt that when we did our meditation work this morning, is that um, we need to have our experiences. We, are, we learn from our experiences. If, we, if, we, if every time we forgave somebody, you know, they say, oh, I forgive you, but I don't forget. Well, don't forget. But your memory of it should be neutral but you still remember that something happened because that's helpful. It's helpful to know what happened and to use that information to know, you know, what likely could happen in the future. I'm going to talk about that a little bit further in. But the idea of forgetting our experiences is not what forgiveness is about. Forgiveness is not about denying our feelings. We are entitled to our feelings. Now, there's a difference, though, between having a feeling when something happens, and chances are the feeling you're having when you feel like you've been offended by somebody, you got your feelings hurt, chances are you've had that same feeling hurt many times in your life. And one thing I often ask people when they're holding on to that over time is, when did you feel that way before? And they go right to it. My mom or, or my dad or somebody else said something or did something, and, and, and I remember I felt the same way. Well, you know, it may have more to do with that one than it does the one that just happened. And it's really helpful to not get caught up in, in thinking somehow we have, to, we have to, like, suck it up. We don't. We, we can feel what we need to feel, but then get over it. And it's when it gets two days old, two weeks old, two months, two years, that we're not dealing with that anymore. Something else is going on. So don't deny your feelings at the same time if you have them continuously showing up with the same images of the same event, you've got some forgiveness work to do. Forgiveness is not about having something over others. Some people use it this way. They get offended so that they can forgive. And then who's in charge? You know, I forgive you. It was really a stupid thing you did, but I forgive you. And then tomorrow, I forgive you because you did it again. No, that's not the purpose of forgiveness. That's an abuse of the concept, the spiritual concept of forgiveness. So don't do that. So now these are the things that, that forgiveness is not. What is forgiveness? Oh, I got one more, taking back our power. There it is. Forgiveness is taking back our power, because when we become the victim we have this thing where we actually say, this one did this thing, and it had some power over me. It caused me to act in a certain way, feel a certain thing, do a certain thing, and I, I was a victim. They made me do it. No, none of that's real. And, but that's how we do this idea of having a grievance story. So the, the act of forgiveness means I take my power back. 
I no longer see you as someone that can do something that can hurt me. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a, a nicety at all. It can just be, you know, I forgive you because I'm, I'm tired of wasting my time blaming you for the way I'm feeling. And, and when it's you who is doing it, I can't change how I'm feeling. So let me let you off the hook in my mind. Not for you, for me. I'll, I'll let this go. And then you got nothing on me. And that's really an effective way to, to break through this idea of having someone have something over you. Take your power back. Forgiveness is about taking responsibility for our feelings. The truth is, is that we create all of our feelings from beginning to end. Nobody can create a feeling in us. No one can make us feel something. We choose that. We may choose it unconsciously or kind of automatically, but it's still our choice. And at any moment, we can change any feeling we have in a heartbeat. So you're not tied to a feeling that someone else gave you. That's not what forgiveness is about. Forgiveness is about our healing, not someone else's. I think I probably already talked about that. But it is true that we cannot heal someone else's uh, situation. We can only heal ours. And forgiveness is the best tool I have ever seen for actually accomplishing that end. It's our work, though. We get to be the physician that heals thyself. And we do that by forgiving. And I think this is the last one. Yes, eliminating our need for separation. And here's where I want to talk about this idea of how I use uh, forgiveness in a way that, uh, that I find it doesn't create a repetition of things. See, this is how it works. We have expectations on how we're going to act and how other people are going to act. It's just natural. We expect people to be courteous and kind and friendly and such as that. And when people aren't, when people do something contrary, we have a, a, a reaction. And out of that reaction, we get stuck with the feelings. So... We, have, we think the only thing we can do is stay away from that person, but we're really not staying away from them because we're thinking about what happened over and over and over again. So that's not staying away from anything. In fact, that's just immersing yourself in it. So, and, and there are times in life I, I, I know that we, we really just need to have some space between us and somebody else. Some of those people we were married to. And there are other people. Sometimes it's family members. But basically, most of the people, especially at work and here and other places, I've had people ask me to have other people not come here because it made them feel uncomfortable. I can't do that. I can't do that. That's not the way life works. So if you're going to be in a place where, where someone is and you haven't forgiven them, you're going to feel terrible every time it happens. If you can forgive them, what's going to happen is you can be in the room. And here's how I do it. I trust people. I trust people to be true to their nature. I don't trust them to be true to my expectations. So that if someone lies to me, I don't brand them a liar, but I say they are prone to lie when it suits them. So now I understand their nature. So if they come and tell me something, my thought is, maybe so, maybe not. I'm not going to get hooked. It's not important to me. And that way I can be around that person all the time because they can't hook me. They can't get me into a situation where I feel like somehow I've been offended or done wrong or that I have something that I need to forgive them for. This is, this is the forgive for good is if you can recognize how this person lives their life Whatever it is, and it's not just lying, it could be anything. Whatever it is, though, see that that's the way they are. Now, they may surprise you and suddenly act differently, but maybe not. They, people tend to be true to their nature, and if they do things one, one time, they do things one time, they'll likely do it again. And rather than getting mad at them every time they do it or find fault in them every time they do it, just know that's the way they are. What's the problem? It's just the way they are. And to me, that's the key. That's the thing that makes this happen. So uh, Luskin in his book came up with this idea of that when, we're, when we're, we have a grievance story, it's like watching TV, and on the TV, 
They keep telling the same story over and over and over again. They show the same show over and over and over again. Well, that would kind of work. Now, if, if you were watching any other kind of show and it went over and over and over again, you'd get bored and you'd leave it. But that's not the same, that doesn't seem to be what we get with, uh, uh, with grievance. But if we use that analogy of a television channel actually providing you with a, with a place where you can observe your grievance, maybe you want to think about changing the channel from the grievance channel <laughs> to maybe, I don't know, the beauty channel. What about focusing on all the beauty in your life, where you live, the people that are important to you? What I have found in many cases is that the, the human mind tends to have a wonderful relationship with another being and then that person does something stupid and now all you think about that person is the stupid thing they did instead of remembering all the wonderful things they did all the beautiful things they did we get stuck on the one as though that's the one that all of our attention needs to go to I'm not saying that we wouldn't need to remember they did that but we certainly don't need to be in a place where we define them by it so maybe we watch a beauty, the beauty channel and get some good stuff out of that. Maybe we watch the love channel so that our focus is on how much we love people, even when they screw up. We still love them. And it's true. If you think about it in a family, kids screw up all the time. Parents screw up too. People get angry at each other. They get their feelings. Oh, they still love each other. Love doesn't stop. I've had to point out to a lot of people that we're getting a divorce that you're never going to stop loving this person. You might as well just accept that you love them because you're using all this anger toward them to try to hide that fact. Just accept that you love them. You're just not going to live with them. The love channel. Reality channel. And I'm not talking about reality shows, although that may be where this graphic came from. I'm talking about living in that reality that I just talked about, that people are true to their nature. Let it be okay. And when they do that, they can't hook you. You can't get caught. Just accept the reality of who they are. Love them anyway. See the beauty in them. Maybe you want to watch all these channels. But let that grievance channel go because it's not getting anywhere. Here's some thoughts for you from some great thinkers. We can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. I think he's on to something. I think this really does take discipline and strength to do, but it's worth it. Whatever our religion, we know that if we really want to love, we must first learn to forgive before anything else. Yeah, because forgiveness really gets in the way of knowing that love is there. And uh, St. Teresa of Calcutta knew that very well in all of her work. And finally... From Byron Katie, forgiveness is just another name for freedom. Because when you can let it go, you really are free. And that's the way we're meant to be. So know that I love you. Spend some time this week maybe thinking about who you could put on your forgiveness list and let, and let off the hook so that you could be free. I love you very much. Thank you all.